Um, um, thank you, Satya. It, in one point, it will be important. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'd like to simplify my life uh, considering only uh, even integers n. When f our formulas are ne uh, slightly neater, although, as I said, it's, it's, it's only uh, for, for convenience. So, uh, when you have this uh, joint probability density, what is the next uh, goal of every, I don't know, of every, I won't say, but of many random matrix practitioners, is of course to, uh, to extract uh, so-called uh, correlation functions, or, or in other contexts they're known as marginal densities. It means basically to integrate uh, this joint probability density over some subset of variables and finding uh, the result depending on the rest. Uh, these um, are very important objects. Let me introduce them. They are standard objects in random matrix uh, theory. They, these are the following uh, RKs depending on Z1, on K arguments. Ks. And they are given by n factorial divided by n minus k factorial uh, integral, okay, of n minus k copies of complex plane, I mean, of as many complex variables of this probability density. Okay, uh, with some qualifi uh, qualification, I, I, I should not say o over this, but of, uh, I will explain in the moment, and then integrate it. I will use the following. I use D2Z uh, showing that we integrated the uh, integrating in, in the complex plane. Some other people you, you just use DZ, but I usually reserve DZ when I, I do contour integration online. So this is D2 will be that you just integrate over uh, independently over DX and uh, DY. D, uh, D2 is a K plus 1 to the last bit, D2ZN. Now, I said uh, this is P, but it does not bear uh, indices LM. It means that I already summed over in a proper way over all sectors. So it's really joint probability density of over all. So we know that it may, it may happen that uh, matrix has uh, only real eigenvalues, then uh, one pair of uh, complex conjugate, two, and so on. So I should really take these uh, conditional densities and sum, sum the, uh, them up uh, and uh, form uh, really the joint probability density of all eigenvalues, and then integrating it over of um, uh, n minus k eigenvalues, I get the function of the remaining k, and these are this is known as k po okay at least uh, frequently called k point correlation function, or also known as marginal densities k point correlation function. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need, but this is also, you, you should really uh, take into account appropriately. I mean, uh, yes, you, you need to know weights. In, uh, with, uh, I, I, I just put this under the carpet, but because I don't like to, to, to go into this discussion, but it's known how to do it. Um, okay, so why, okay, uh, the simplest of these objects, uh, the simplest of this object is just R1. And what is R1? R1 is just, uh, as a function of, of one variable, which I'll call Z, is nothing else as uh, when you integrate here over all but one. Obviously, this is uh, just a uh, mean value of the spectral counting measure. Uh, so uh, describing how many eigenvalues are uh, the density of eigenvalues uh, around the point Z in the complex plane. So I just write, um, I, I will systematically use a uh, notation that uh, I think physicists uh, like very much, but mathematicians not always. I will use angular brackets to denote ensemble average. Averaging over, over ensemble of these matrices, I will use 
uh, angular brackets for this. So uh, in form, uh, I can write uh, this is just nothing else as expectation. So the bracket states for this expectation of a spectral counting measure. Uh, OK, I will write it, explain this notation. So by delta 2, I mean two-dimensional delta function. It's product of delta function for uh, real parts and uh, for imaginary parts. So it's basically uh, counting uh, measure for, uh, for eigenvalues, and this is its, uh, its mean value. So it's mean eigenvalue density given by R1. And uh, high correlation function, for example, R2 will be extremely handy if you ask the following question. You take uh, part of the complex plane, some domain in the complex plane, and you ask what will be variance of the number of eigenvalues inside this, uh, inside this domain. It can be expressed very simply in terms of R2. And so on. Uh, higher correlation properties can be characterized. If you know all these objects, you know a lot. I won't like to say that you know everything, but uh, you know a lot. And these, these are considered to be the most important objects. Um, we do not have uh, any clock here? 20 minutes. 20 minutes, thank you. So uh, it's clearly a very non-trivial job to sum up with appropriate weights this, uh, this um, probability densities to form the density and then to integrate it. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it was done. In fact, I believe explicitly it was done around um, year 2007. Simultaneously, again, uh, Peter may correct me because uh, I may uh, mix things, but I think in, in at least uh, in my timeline, uh, which I have in mind, uh, around 2007, uh, there was a breakthrough in understanding of this, um, of, of uh, how to calculate these objects. They were shown uh, really uh, to follow from a uh, very nice integrability Pfaffian structure uh, hidden in this, in, in this expression. Uh, again, uh, I hope that um, Misha Poplavsky will give hints, uh, if not all derivation, because derivation is again is not simple at all. And so these three groups that I mentioned, so uh, order in which I will uh, call the name uh, is arbitrary. I do not remember really how it appears, but there were three groups almost simultaneously obtaining these results. Um, Baradin Sinclair, uh, then uh, Forrester Nagao, and uh, Zomers, I'm not sure whether with some collaborator or on his own. Roughly speaking, about uh, around 2007. And methods, by the way, were uh, not identical. Uh, Baradin Sinclair method and uh, Forrester Nagao method have more in common, although they do not coincide. Uh, Zomers really proposed uh, in, uh, quite interesting um, uh, method of uh, getting these results. And uh, in, in, in some sense, um, I think, um, n n n nice uh, development. And I hope, again, uh, I mentioned that uh, Misha will give uh, some account of these developments. But what, is, what was the result? The result is as follows. Pfaffian structure, namely, uh, it turns out OK, I will write theorem, although I will, won't f formulate it probably in full, in full generality, but, but more, more or less. So theorem is uh, that uh, these Rn's, Rn's, they are given by Pfaffians. I will ex explain, introduce uh, what Pfaffian is for those who never encountered it. Uh, in the moment, but I just claim Pfaffians. Pfaffian is always um, associated with skew symmetric or sometimes called anti symmetric uh, matrices. And uh, this, uh, for, for this correlation function, these uh, matrices are made of blocks, blocks uh, with two indices K, K and L, and there are 
uh, this is n by n, um, n by n matrix in blocks, and every block is two by two matrix. So it's two n by two n matrix altogether. And these uh, blocks Q, K, L, they are, they are of the following form, uh, K, K, L, uh, J, K, L. But uh, notation may be in my in my setting not not the ideal because J. Uh, is not absolutely different. It's not the Ginebra J, but I hope there will be no confusion. I just noticed that it's uh, coincidence here. JKL minus JKL, so it's anti-symmetric. WKL. So this is two by two blocks, and uh, uh, there are n square uh, these blocks with this anti-symmetry property. KL goes from one to n. And all entries, uh, all f uh, entries, three uh, different types of entries in this matrix, can be expressed uh, basically in terms of two anti-symmetric functions. One is known as the kernel function. So kernel, kernel, uh, I will call it K. Uh, calligraphic K, uh, not very calligraphic in my writing. Uh, Z1, Z2, it's just function of two variables. I won't write it explicitly at the moment, because uh, I will write it eventually, but not, uh, not now. Um, but just uh, one such function. And second uh, function, I don't know uh, whether it has some standard name, but it's denoted uh, frequently as f of z1, z2. And I will write it explicitly. Exponential minus z1 squared plus z2 squared divided by 2. Here is the following 2i imaginary del uh, two-dimensional delta function of z1 there are several ways of writing this function. I, I, you, I, they're all equivalent, but I just use one particular way, which I find uh, nicer. Uh, uh, SGN is signum, is just sign of what is uh, sign of, of, of uh, real number. So here is sign of y1, where y1, okay, z1, z1 or 2 are equal to x1 or 2 plus i, y, 1, or 2, right? So these are complex, uh, real and uh, complex part of uh, complex number z. So here is y1. Now, uh, this uh, nice function, erfic, of modulus of y1 times square root of 2, uh, I think, yes. One recognizes similar construction here. Um, then uh, this is one term, and second term plus plus uh, delta function, just one dimensional delta function, delta function of y1, delta function of y2, and uh, sine of the difference x2 minus x1. And bracket closed. So this is explicit uh, explicit uh, form of function f. And now, uh, uh, how one builds these entries of this matrix using k's and f's in the following way: k k k l equal to k n of z k. ZL, where Zs are just this set of Zs, right? So KKL is just uh, this kernel at values of arguments given by ZK and ZL. JKL is equal to integral um, of the kernel ZKZ integrated with uh, f f at z zl 
D to Z. This is, so we just form this product and integrate, or basically it's like um, a con convolution of two kernels. And, uh, okay, I won't write it slightly longer, but also a very explicit expression for WKL as again, it's, it's basically uh, made of F and then some uh, convolution uh, using uh, F and K. And uh, using properties of uh, F and K, one can show that KKL uh, and WKL, they are anti-symmetric due to some, uh, due to anti-symmetricity hidden in uh, F and uh, K. And uh, basically this completes the construction apart from uh, explanation what is Puffin, and this is probably, do I have still uh, five minutes yeah. to, to explain? Hmm? Uh, what, what the f form of K? No, I don't like to give it now. <laughs> no, I, 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 will, I will give it explicitly n uh, next time. I will also use it explicitly. But uh, I, for this, I, I, uh, one word. For this, uh, calculation of K technically is the hardest bit. One really should go through quite uh, tedious calculation in order to get it. But there is one trick which allows to get it relatively cheaply from this structure. I will explain it next time and get it. No, not, not really get it, but hint how to get it. That's why I postpone it. But nevertheless, to, to get uh, just a few words about, uh, about um, Puffins. Okay. So, uh, let A skew symmetric. So A i j equal to minus A j i. Then formal definition of Poiffin um, is the following. Is, um, okay, we know how to calculate determinant using uh, a product of entries from different columns and, and rows uh, weighted with the sign of permutation. Similar structure, not, not dissimilar structure, is for Pfaffen. Really, here some, uh, some goes over uh, all permutations of, of uh, size 2n. So I will call them uh, 2n of, znak, uh, of sign of sign of, uh, of uh, this permutation, then product from 1 to n of A uh, with indices sigma of 2j minus 1, sigma, second index, sigma of 2, 2, 2j, 2j. So this is uh, really a definition of, of, of Pythian that you find. Uh, where summation go, go over permutations of the set 1, 2, to n. Not, uh, however, um, I don't know how you calculate determinants when you confront it with it, but I usually use a method of, uh, I think it goes to Laplace, right? Exp uh, expanding into minors, right? Taking, uh, taking one element, then crossing out. I mean, this is how we were taught. And uh, fortunately, similar method exists for Pfaffian, so uh, I will just give it a recursive relation. Recursive, recursive. Uh, Pfaffian of A is equal to sum. Uh, okay, there are several equivalent ways of writing it, this down. I take one particular, which I think very a i j fafen. I write it in the following way: a tilde one j. So what what is written here? Entry i j of the matrix, then fafen, which is uh, which is obtained. Oh, sorry, not i j one j. It's just expansion in first one j. 
one J. Summation goes over J from two. Uh, of course, so for anti-symmetric matrix, diagonal is zero. So A1J, Pfaffian of the matrix, which is obtained from original matrix A by uh, dele deleting first row and colon and then J's row and colon. So in this way, you relatively easily by hand calculate, say, Pfaffian of four by four, six by six. Uh, further, of course, you should write some code. Um, so these, these are Pfaffians, and the last bit, uh, I believe, for today, important relation be be between Pfaffians and determinants, namely uh, that Pfaffian squared of matrix A is just determinant of anti-symmetric matrix A. Not quite trivial. Uh, I think, again, Misha was going to show how to derive it. Uh, but this is all we need to know next time to calculate some useful quantities for, uh, for, for um, Geneber, which are, will be used to analyze, uh, first to discuss pro, uh, linear stability and then nonlinear stability eventually. I probably finish here. It's natural point to finish. Thank you. We have time for questions. No, it's anti-symmetric, in fact. If you, if you look... But it's no, it's no anti-symmetric either. No, it's, it is. Uh, if you look more attentively in all these relations, you will see that it's anti-symmetric. Somehow, why? Uh, because uh, if you change... Okay, he, this, is, this is trivial anti-symmetric, but this is hidden also. Anti-symmetricity is hidden there. If I did not do any mistake, and I believe it's correct. It, it should be. It should be. Please check. If not, tell me again. <laughs> It was expected to be anti-Semitic. Other questions? Did you say something about how you get your hands on the extreme eigenvalues? This yeah, uh, yes, I will. OK, I will uh, develop next time um, basically some understanding of uh, in simple terms of large deviations of uh, the rightmost eigenvalue. Uh, it's a right tail uh, being very far away from, from the edge, and also it's, uh, it's left tail going to the bulk. It will characterize how far we typically can be from this and justify this what may anticipate that typical eigenvalue will be close to, to the edge. But also I will use it in, in much more constructive way, uh, I think. Uh, when I analyze nonlinear system, because I will really uh, heavily use these large deviations to characterize, to count uh, uh, equilibria. So I will discuss it in, uh, at length, in fact. Okay, a uh, quick announcement. So we'll take a break until 3.15 when Sylvia Serfati will give her first lecture. The uh, problem session for this lecture and Serfati's lecture will be 4.30 to 6 o'clock. We'll, we'll group the two together because uh, there's a uh, dinner at 6 o'clock. And at 4.30, uh, Peter Forrester will give a lecture in this room, a uh, research seminar. So uh, let's thank Jan again. And we'll resume in about 15 minutes. Sorry, just, just one question regarding are the yep. problem sessions back in the tent? Yeah, so the problem session will be in the tent because we have the lecture in here for the research.